Hi, I'm Pastor Mike Dendring from Delta Oaks Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, California. And I want to begin by saying today, Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Uh, congratulations, and we want to let you know that we love and appreciate you for being the best dad that you can. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we want to just say that, and we pray God's blessing upon you, that he would continue to grow, grow you in his grace. And uh, also, Father's Day brings out uh, those times when we miss our dads, uh, I think of those who are without their dads for one or another reason, and we're remembering you as well uh, during this time. But uh, happy, happy Father's Day. And then also another announcement, uh, to, uh, the elders and deacons have met and decided to move forward with uh, a worship service where we can gather together in person, praise the Lord together, and hear his word preached uh, live, <laughs> real, real live. You no longer have... Uh, uh, just a picture of my backyard, but my backyard actually behind me. Um, uh, we are planning to meet in our backyard. Uh, the reason for that is there seems to be a little, the virus doesn't, isn't transmitted very well in open spaces. So even though we could go to the church building and work it out there, eventually we will. But for now, we're going to get started in our backyard. Now, a lot of things have to happen between now and next Sunday. Uh, for this to come together. So do be praying that all those pieces fall in place. And uh, it might be a little rough at first, but uh, I, I think we'll, the Lord will allow us to do that. And then also for those of you who uh, can't make it, and uh, certainly if we don't want anyone who doesn't feel safe to uh, come, but feel free to stay home. We'll, we will have a video as well for you, hopefully of the, the whole service. And if that doesn't work out, I'll make a video of, of just the message. But you won't be receiving that till um, after our, our service, of course. So um, be praying for that. Uh, and be looking in your email box, Delta Oaks Presbyterian Church uh, people. Be looking in your email box for all the details on that service and uh, what you can expect uh, as you... Um, enter, enter uh, into the backyard uh, next Sunday for worship. So I'm, I'm so excited about this. I, I'm almost surprised how excited I am after our meeting where we decided we would continue. I really uh, was so happy. In fact, I had a hard time focusing in on completing this message for you today. I kept my thoughts kept going for to what we need to do and, and, uh, and the message for, uh, for next week. So anyway, so I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are too. Uh, now, through this, for the last number of weeks, we, we've been going through different psalms uh, on Sunday. And uh, when it, but when it came to Mother's Day, I went off course a little bit, and did a did a message from a different passage for Mother's Day, and I thought I would do the same for Father's Day. Then it came to me: No, I can stay in the psalms and do a Father's Day message as well. We're not going to look at everything in detail of the psalms but draw some points out that really uh, hopefully speak uh, to fathers and the whole issue of father, fatherhood. So what uh, we're going to look at today is uh, Psalm 127 and, and, and 128. We're going to do both psalms together. So let's begin by reading these two psalms. First, Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain you raise, rise early and stay up late, toiling for your food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. Psalm 128. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem, and may you live to see your children's children. Peace 
be upon Israel. So far, the reading of God's word. The first thing I want to bring out here today from these psalms is that uh, that fatherhood, with all its responsibilities, is good. And what I'm trying to get across to you by saying that fatherhood is good is, is not, first of all, that it, that it feels good or that it's good for men to be fathers, though that certainly is true. But the point that I want to make first is that that father is qualitatively good because God is God's idea and God declares that it is good. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, after he was done with all this creative work, we read in Genesis 1 verse 33, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. So God's creation as he designed it, as he created it, is good. And let no one say that the world as God created it initially is anything less than good and good ideas. For God himself declares it to be good. So also, uh, is fatherhood good? Because fatherhood is part of God's original creative plan and purpose. Uh, a few verses before this declaration of the goodness of creation, we read about the institution of the family, which includes, of course, the father. In Genesis 1, verse 27 and 28, we read, So God created man in his own image. In the image of man, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, uh, and fill the earth and subdue it. The family, the way that God designed it, including fatherhood, is good because God created it. It's God's idea. It's God's plan. And he, in fact, declared it uh, in his infinite wisdom to be good. So we see in the in this psalm uh, as well, it, it, you see this in the psalm as well, as, as these psalms speak of fathers mentioning all the responsibilities that come with it, which include uh, building a home, a house, a home, a community, having a wife, uh, working uh, to provide for the family, raising children. And all of those responsibilities, there's not one hint in these psalms that any of these are to be viewed as something negative. In Psalm 127, the building of a, of a home or a house, Protecting the community, working, having a family are, are all positive things to seek after, right? Now, in verse 2, it might seem that the psalmist puts work in a, regular, in a little negative light. He says, in vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. But this, is, this verse is not referring to regular work but overwork and stressing out with any, with any success, which leaves little room for the blessing, God's blessing of rest, right? Then in Psalm 128, all the aspects of fatherhood are put in the most positive way. Blessed is a man who eats the fruit of his labor. Blessed is the man who has a fruitful wife. Blessed is the man who has children and grandchildren as well. Uh, to be a father with all its responsibilities is good. God declares it so. So yes, there are troubles. There are troubles. Uh, if you know the, the biblical, no biblical history, you know that uh, after creation, sin entered the picture and frustrated God's creation and frustrated the work of mankind so that it's by the sweat of his brow that his work produces fruit. It doesn't always produce fruit. Uh, sin also plays havoc in our relationships and relationships between husband and wives and fathers and children. So it, it is hard work to be part of building a home, building a, a family, building a house, working a job, being a good husband and a good relationship, raising children. But don't let that trouble con you into thinking that, there, that it's not a good thing. It, it's a good thing. Yes, it's frustrated by sin that needs to be dealt with, but it's a good thing. 
And yes, our culture does not put a priority on fatherhood or desiring or working to be a good father. I remember years ago, we used to talk about how TV shows, uh, family TV shows, the father was always the doofus of the family, right? I mean, I think that's changed a little bit. Um, I don't know, but, uh, but again, don't let the thinking of the day, whatever it is, become your thinking. As Christians, we are to think God's thoughts after him. And God says fatherhood and, and all that goes with it is uh, at its foundation good, even in light of the frustrations of sin. He who desires to be a good father desires a noble thing. So boys, uh, young men, and older men, paraphrasing the psalmist in uh, 128, 5 and 6, may the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life, that you may see the prosperity of your family and community, that, may you, that you may live to see your children's children. Peace be upon God's people. Fatherhood and all the responsibilities that go with it is uh, qualitatively, qualitatively good. It is to be sought after and strived for. So what do we do, uh, fathers? We, we, do we go, out, we go out there and we do the best that we can. We learn what it is to be a father. We plan, we work hard, and we love our families with all of our hearts. But wait, wait, don't forget, don't forget that the, what the world has no concept of. Yes, work hard, but remember, quote, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. And unless the Lord builds the home, the family, we labor in vain. Consider uh, two building projects that we hear about in the Bible. The first uh, one is the city and tower of Babel, Babel, however you'd like to say it. Uh, humanly speaking, it, this project should not have failed. They had a massive workforce with, a great, with great zeal and unity and the desire to get this thing done. And it seems they had the plan, the engineering, the materials to accomplish the project as well. Humanly speaking, this should not have failed, except for this one point, except for the fact that God was not in it. And so it says in Genesis, Genesis 11, verse 8, So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. They had it figured out. They knew what to do. They were working hard. They were intent on getting it done and doing it right. But, Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Now compare that to another building project, another project, the rebuilding of the wall uh, uh, of Jerusalem under Nehemiah. Now he had to gather a workforce together and really inspire them to do what they had already left undone before. And it, this project happened under the, uh, the stress of ridicule from others, the threat of violence in the midst of political lies about them and maneuvering. Uh, but in the midst of all this, that wall was built in record time by people who had to hold a weapon in one hand while they worked on the wall with the other. Now, how can this be? How could this get done? Well, God gave them success. God was in it. And they knew that, that as they worked hard, even though they worked hard, the reason for their success was that, that God, God builds the house, as our psalmist says. And so we read in Nehemiah 6, beginning at verse 15, so the wall was completed in 52 days, right? When all of our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. These people knew the truth of Psalm 127, that unless the Lord builds the house, 
its builders labor in vain. And we see that we see that clearly, for example, when they were under military threat, when their enemies were planning to come up against them. Nehemiah 4 9 says they they prayed to God. That's that's how, what their response was. They prayed to God and posted a guard day and night to meet the threat. So and so do not forget these words, fathers, unless the Lord, unless the Lord work hard, that's your duty, but also pray hard, knowing that everything depends on the Lord's blessing. That includes the building of your home. Verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. That includes the building of a, a, a community, the protection and peace of a community. Verse 1, unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. It includes the success of your career, your work. The Lord decides whether you make a living in a reasonable day's work and are able to have a the blessing of a good night's sleep, right? Uh, verse two, in vain you rise early and stay up late toiling for your food, for he grants sleep for those he loves. Boy, that, that reminds me of the days when I was a, a general contractor building homes and oh boy, I remember those jobs where you get halfway through and you figured out that your something went wrong, you didn't bid it right, or it just wasn't going the way you thought. And, you know, you're on the job personally working all the hours you can and you're up nights trying to, with the pencil and paper, trying to figure out how to, how to make it work. And, uh, and if you're not working, trying to figure things out at night, you're, you know, you're pacing the floors rather than sleeping. Certainly is the Lord's blessing when you can work a regular day and uh, sleep, sleep in peace at night and in so doing provide for your family. And verses uh, 3, 3 through 5, uh, the same thing is true in, in having a family. Unless the Lord gives you children, there will be none. For verse 3, sons are a heritage from the Lord. The children are a reward from him. These days with modern medical science, we are more apt to think that we are fully in charge of when it comes to having children or not. Uh, and to think that is to miss things. We are so very thankful for medical science and all the help that it can give. But the bottom line, children are a heritage. And of course, a heritage or an inheritance is by de definition uh, something you get uh, not, not, uh, that you did not earn. It, it's a gift from God. A gift, by the way, that is not to be seen as a burden. You kind of get that feeling from the way uh, people talk about it, but not a burden, but as a reward. Again, no matter how our culture sees it, uh, we need to be careful not to just be sucked into our culture's thinking. We are to see, uh, think God's thoughts after him, again, to see our children as a great blessing from God. Uh, uh, a blessing that you know benefits the family, uh, particularly in this context of the Psalm, the, uh, the father, uh, is blessed by sons born in his youth. <laughs> Have them early, right? Uh, things are changing these days. Uh, sons born in your youth, sons that is, sons that have enough time to grow up and be useful while you're still young enough to use them. It, the psalmist says, like arrows in the hands of a warrior, blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. That is, they are, they are his most important commodity. Uh, you know, what is a warrior without arrows? So is a father without sons by his side. Now, you know, this really fits the co context of the culture in which the psalmist lives with sons. But in our cultures, of course, daughters would be included that, in that as well. Uh, children are also a benefit in that uh, verse 5. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies at the gate. The gate was a place in Israel where disputes were settled, where courts was, a court was held. What a blessing to have wise children who can stand up for your cause as you're getting older. These are the blessings. Uh, but again, the, the point is, how is it that you are going to have children like this? Children that will protect you, take up your cause, contend for you. 
uh, yes, you, ha you, you must have and raise them right, but don't forget it is of the Lord. Everything depends on God's blessings. So, so fathers, away with your self-reliance and vain conceit. Do what's right, learn, plan well, work hard, pray hard. Uh, do all that in the building of your home, your community, your career, the raising of your children, your relationship with your wife. But know and know it well, know it well. It all depends on God's blessing. Don't forget this, unless the Lord builds the house or the home or the family, you will labor in vain. Well, if it's ultimately up to the Lord's doing, who is it that he blesses with such success? What is, what's the context in, in which God's blessing is seen? Well, Psalm 128 answers that for us. Verse one says, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. Those who fear the Lord, as it says in verse 1 and again in verse 4, are those who receive the blessing. In other words, this is the context in which we really come uh, to see and experience God's blessings. And, uh, and again, not as something, these blessings come not as something earned or deserved by your efforts. Uh, no matter how grand our attempts are, they are never perfect, and they do not merit God's blessings. But the fact is God does graciously reward those who fear him. Again, this is the context in which we really experience God's blessings. Now, to fear God here, this fear is not a negative thing. It's not the kind of fear that would cause you to to run away from him, right? It is the, the attitude that you have towards him, knowing that he is a God of sovereign majesty and power, uh, that he is a God who is holy and just, and that he is a God who loves you with a tremendous and powerful, effectual love, a love that causes him to come and make that atoning sacrifice for your sin, that justice might be met, and that you might have the blessings described in this psalm. This kind of fear uh, that we are talking about here causes you not, not to want to do, to do anything that would disappoint your Father God or disrupt your closest, closeness, uh, the closeness of your fellowship with him or cause him to need to, uh, to discipline you as a father does his child. This kind of fear gives you a desire to truly love him in deep ways, to appreciate him, respect him, and to, and to worship him, and, as the psalmist says, to walk in his ways, that is, follow his commandments as given in his word. This is who the Lord says he blesses. This is the context of his blessings, those who fear him and humbly walk in his ways. And he blesses those people abundantly. The psalm, psalmist uh, seems to me list uh, blessings galore, blessings plus for the, the father who fears the Lord. Uh, concerning the sex, success of your work, verse 2 says, you will eat the fruit of your labor. Right? Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Uh, blessing, the blessing here seemed to, to go beyond just what your labor deserved, just the basics. Uh, concerning the family, verse 3, your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons, and again, it would include daughters in our culture, would be like olive shoots around your table. Uh, not only will you have uh, children, but your sons will be these strapping young lads, you know, strong and healthy, ready to work hard. Uh, you know, the picture here is that of an old olive tree getting all twisted up and knotty as they grow old. Uh, but then all around the tree, there's these young, healthy, vital new olive shoots growing out of the roots of the old tree, tree ready to support the old tree and take up the cause of growing uh, that next generation of fruit. Well, likewise, your children sitting around your table, strong and healthy and ready to care for you, 
the old man <laughs> ready to, to take up your cause. Well, not only that, but so blessed are you that you live to see your children's children, verse 6. So we have blessings the Lord, blessings plus. That's what the Lord gives to those who fear him and walk in his ways. So fathers, uh, obviously the message is clear. The application, application is clear. Fear the Lord. Come to fear the Lord. It's the beginning of understanding. Walk in his ways. Well, fatherhood, uh, fatherhood, with all its responsibilities uh, and uh, even with the effects of sin in our lives, it's good. We know it's good, even though it's trying at times. Uh, we know it's good and it's to be strived after because God declares it so. So, boys, young men, men, go out and make it your desire to be a father and be the father God wants you to be. Build a home, uh, which is, by the way, the, the foundation, the basis of a community. Work hard to provide for your family and your church family. Have and raise, have children and uh, raise your children well. But remember, always remember as you do this hard work that unless the Lord builds, you build in vain. Everything depends on God's blessing, God's work in you. And who does God bless? What is the context of his blessing? Those who fear him those who fear him. Well, one more thing I want to say. At the conclusion of Psalm 128, the psalmist says, peace be upon Israel. Peace, that is uh, in part the kind of life that is spoken of in the psalm, be upon Israel. Well, if you know the history of Israel, God's people of old, you know that uh, in time they did not uh, experience that peace and the house of Israel fell and faded away as God's people. And why is that? Because they did not continue to fear the Lord and walk in his ways. And that was seen especially as they eventually rejected God's son, Jesus Christ. Israel failed and did not uh, uh, continue to experience that peace. But then uh, Jesus Christ came and where Israel failed, uh, we see that Jesus succeeded. He feared and perfectly obeyed God, his heavenly Father. And so the Father blesses and builds his house, the church and people of, of, of his church uh, uh, through, through Jesus. It is those who belong to Christ in his house, the church, his people, uh, that, uh, that receive the blessings. It is those who believe and trust in Christ who have the blessings and the, and the power of the Spirit to fear the Lord and to walk in his ways. So, fathers, the first order of business is to fear the Lord Jesus Christ to believe in him, to trust him with all of your heart and walk in his ways. For unless the Lord Jesus Christ builds your home, you build in vain. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do thank you for these beautiful psalms that uh, speak so much of the family and of fatherhood. And uh, we thank you for the message of the psalm, that, it, that, that uh, fatherhood is good and children are a wonderful blessing from you and that we are to strive hard for uh, in raising our children as being fathers, but also the message that uh, unless, unless you are in it, we work and, and strive uh, for nothing. So, Father, help us to, to hold that in our minds and our hearts and always trust in you and your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Spirit working in him to be the fathers that you would have us to be. So, Father, we thank you uh, for being our Heavenly Father and for saving us through Jesus Christ, for giving us your Holy Spirit that might, we might walk in your ways. 
And we pray your blessing upon our families and our fathers. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you very much for being a part of this today. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful Father's Day and uh, that the Lord's blessing would be upon you. And